so the topic is current electricity okay so whenever a charge starts moving it will actually give out different kinds of properties okay let's say moving charge in fact uh, the next topic would be nothing but talking about moving charges and when we actually have moving charges they are going to give rise to something which we call as the magnetic field but if the charge is not moving it's not going to give you any kind of uh, you know field uh, or magnetic field as such okay so if you start with uh, current electricity as we know we all denote it by i okay and its uh, unit is uh, ampere we have a charge and it will uh, start moving and it will okay dq by dt okay that is nothing but moving charge rate of change of charge how fast does it change okay that will actually give me what we call as the current right and uh, one more important thing it is more or less a scalar quantity okay and in times it is not a vector but then you know it might have other dimensions involved in it we can also call it as a tensor okay so it's a scalar or a tensor so if there are multiple choice question for example oh, oh, current is a scalar vector okay and other options you can definitely select scalar but your first option if it is given tensor also then instead of scalar you should consider tensor okay that is the first choice tensor is a uh, for you know scalar is a special form of tensor okay so that's that we're not going to go discuss a tensor about here okay but why current is uh, not a vector that is also a very important factor whenever something wants to be a vector it should follow certain laws in fact vector law of addition okay so what happens is if you're basically considering a uh, current it uh, does not follow vector law of addition and that is why it is not a vector okay hence it's not a vector that's the concept of current why it is not a vector because you know uh, we say that the current will flow in a direction opposite to the flow of electrons then how can we say that it's a scalar and not a vector because it does not follow the vector law of addition what do i mean by this simple uh, if you want to you know there is a law for this also if you want to measure what is the current at this particular point okay or maybe the current at this particular point let's say this angle is 60 degree okay and we have got three currents coming in okay this is 2 ampere this is 3 ampere and this is 4 ampere what is the current at this junction okay in fact uh, as a law kirchhoff's law and all okay that is it and here let's say this angle is uh, uh, maybe 80 degree and maybe this angle is a bit larger maybe 80 degree more okay although the diagram is not correct but let anyway let's say and let's say this is 80 plus 80 60 into 80 maybe okay so here also it is 3 ampere and 2 ampere and 2 ampere so if you look into both these cases the current at this particular point is 3 <coughs> ampere coming in 2 ampere and 2 ampere so 2 to 6 plus 3 okay let me take one more 3 because here i have taken 2 3 amperes so 3 3 6 and 2 8 ampere so the total current is 8 ampere here if you consider this particular case this is 2 this is 3 3 6 so this is also 8 ampere so you see in both the cases it remains as am 8 ampere it does not depend at what angle it is coming in so that's the reason that you know it's not a vector in fact this also tells me that it does not follow the vector law of addition so that's very important okay so when we talk about current uh, uh, whenever we talked about uh, potential okay we did connect it with a vector and we can say that electric field is a vector and potential is more or less a scalar so what we did was we said that the potential difference is equal to nothing but the vector electric field dot dr <coughs> so you can take a dot product with uh, uh, you know chain uh, distant direction of the field and then you can find out uh, the dot product and you will get a potential so potential is scalar and connected with a vector similarly in current also we can have something which is actually called current density density 
we are not right now we're not looking into any kind of proof yeah is going to discuss these things current density and current density is usually denoted by j as i said and some other class also that whenever we say density we straight away try to uh, think that it is mass by volume but that's wrong right because you know this mass by volume is mass density mass density similarly you know if i say current density that means on top it should be more or less current so that's i and density means it is current per unit area okay if i write down current per unit area if we write down current per unit area then only we can say that it is talking about density so that's current per unit area and uh, this is actually a vector but per area means something should be vector here this area is actually called a area vector so it's a very important part we're going to discuss that now and what is the unit of current that's ampere and area is meter square so that means current density as a unit of ampere per meter square okay important we'll see that how we are going to use it later so let's say i basically have a cylinder okay i have got a cylinder this is my cylinder and let's say uh, the area is a this is my area and we know uh, the current is flowing through it this cylinder might be a wire also you know wire is also in the form of a cylinder and this is my current that is flowing so current i is flowing through an area a and that way we can actually find out what is the density i by a whatever is the current divided by the cross sectional area and then <coughs> what is current density okay so this uh, current density that we are talking about which we are saying that it's nothing but current by area area in this case is more or less directional okay and uh, this uh, j bar that we have it has got a direction as the current same as that of i direction okay the direction of current density will be same as that of current because current is also flowing in the same direction okay now imagine that the area that we are talking about is like this slanted we want to find out what is the current flowing out through this slanted area the current is flowing straight but the area that we want to find out the current is flowing through is a is slanted so what is the direction of the area vector the area vector okay or the area is always in this direction perpendicular okay so this is the direction of the area that we are talking about okay but on the other hand if we are talking about the area vector this is the direction of the area i have already told you before also we did that if you are considering any kind of area the direction of the area vector so okay it's always in the direction perpendicular to the area but as we said that the current density will be the direction of current current is flowing in this direction so what is the component of this vector along this this would be nothing but a cos theta let's say we're making an angle theta here so this is a cos theta okay so there is a big difference here that we need to understand first thing a okay and this is nothing but area okay should be perpendicular okay this is perpendicular but when we are talking about uh, the area vector that means the direction in which the current is flowing <coughs> is parallel okay parallel to current flow it is always parallel to the current flow okay so that means if i want to find out what is my uh, you know area or current <coughs> you can see here if i write down i it is nothing but j bar into a okay a bar 
so if in this case if you want to find out the current i can simply write it down as j and the area is nothing but cos of theta so cos theta means dot product so i can simply write it down as j bar dot a bar so what does it mean that i current is a scalar is a dot product of these two components so just like i said for potential it is e dot dr for current it is j bar dot a bar okay so that's the idea behind current density and please remember the area that we are considering uh, for the current density should be along the direction of current that's why i have to break it into a component i have written it as a cos theta and this is the direction of the area <coughs> vector perpendicular to the surface of the area okay so in a way we know that it is <coughs> more or less direction dependent <coughs> okay so based on this okay uh, we can actually write down even the <coughs> scalar in the vector form of ohm's law okay we're going to write down this vector form and for writing down the vector form we actually need a vector quantity that's why we need to understand what is j but right now let's go back and uh, learn the basics of ohm's law and then they will come back to the vector form we are not going to prove anything right now just we are going to discuss uh, what's my ohm's law okay so ohm's law states that this uh, potential that we have or the change in potential that we have is proportional to the current okay so this is my ohm's law in scalar form scalar form okay no direction involved we don't have any uh, vector quantity here so this is there so we know that this potential difference is equal to i and the constant was my r okay so this r is a constant for any material okay it does not depend on the voltage or current because if we write down r is equal to delta v divided by i it does not depend on voltage and current because <laughs> if the voltage increases current will increase voltage decreases current will decrease and that change is linear so that means this ratio will always remain the same and that's why the resistance for that particular system will be same okay so in general if we write down a statement for this resistance this is important because later on you will see there will be conceptual questions based on this maybe so this uh, resistance uh, that we have okay of uh, conductor okay resistance of conductor and this is constant okay this is constant for ohmic conductor so this resistance is constant for ohmic conductor now it is very important to divide materials and divide them into ohmic and non ohmic okay that's very important so what happens is that in general if you are basically plotting a graph let's say i'm changing the voltage and based on that i'm getting some current so maybe i can plot a graph between voltage and current maybe zero voltage no current as i increase the voltage the current will increase i will get a straight line okay so this i can take a curve here okay this is the change in voltage this is the change in current okay and take the ratio <coughs> or you can even i can take at any particular point as well okay so this will be the change in voltage this would be the change in current so if i take delta v by delta i i'm going to get the slope which is always going to be the constant and this will actually represent the resistance so you can take the slope and you can find out the resistance so this kind of graph that we can actually see is more or less ohmic in nature okay so this is ohmic conductor and this is the nature of the graph that is voltage and current are you know uh, proportional to each other but if you are considering something as non ohmic uh, the best example would be that of a semiconductor which you uh, might have studied before also when we talk about semiconductor it means that uh, this voltage and current that we have is not going to change proportionally what happens is in semiconductors anyway i'm not going to discuss that right now but we know it it can be connected in forward bias or reverse bias when we take forward bias 
you cannot have a current for some voltage and then suddenly it will jump but it won't be a straight line in reverse bias it would be something like this reverse breakdown and all, all those concepts are there but anyway the main thing is v is not proportional to i <coughs> it's can keep on changing so this is more or less an example of non ohmic system so it's if someone tells you a statement that uh, uh, you basically have uh, ohms law being followed by every object the answer is wrong ohms law is only followed by an ohmic system a non ohmic system does not follow ohms law so this is uh, important okay so uh, you can actually find out the slope and all that means you know uh, we can find out what is tan of theta okay if you want to find out the slope of this you can find out what is tan of theta and then calculate it so okay so this is the idea behind the ohm slope so if i <coughs> write down this as v is equal to i r Va minus Vb, Vb might be infinity, that means the potential at a particular point as we have already discussed, we know. Uh, this is the uh, scalar form. And as I said, uh, we if we involve J, we will actually have the vector form. We are not going into the derivation of this at this point of time. But if someone gives us this relation, E is equal to <coughs> rho J bar. Okay this is actually the vector form this is the vector form now if you consider a conductor okay or insulator or whatever uh, there is an important term which is actually called the resistivity okay so this rho that we actually have is resistivity so if there is resistance there should be conductance as well so this uh, if we take uh, the reciprocal of rho reciprocal of rho we will actually get conductivity <laughs> so you can see here uh, i can also write it down as j bar current density is e bar by rho right you can take the cross multiply it so this would be sigma e okay so this is also a vector form so you can write down j is equal to sigma e and that will also be a vector form okay uh, if you can in fact you know get v is equal to ir from this relation itself because j is equal to i divided by a okay and then you can do <laughs> your cross multiplication okay so i is equal to v divided by r that derivation can be done and we can find it out and say that it's the same form if we convert it into scalar we are not going to do it right now because if we you know know the vector form and the scalar form we can in fact use both of them to solve a number of numerical problems as well okay so that's one idea that should be there <coughs> just a second so i'm expecting that uh, this concept will be important uh, to how to use ohm's law to simplify circuits find out voltage and current across components and so on so let's do it okay anyway if we know the trick of one we can use it everywhere so this will be more or less a numerical part so let's say we are basically having a circuit like this okay we let, let me take the simplest one first and we will discuss that okay So, uh, obviously at this level you might also get some complicated circuits which will be given and you are supposed to find out what is the equivalent resistance at some point. Maybe somewhere they will ask you to find out what is the voltage across a component or current across a component. Let us try to see what we can do here. Okay. So, we have got a 12 volt voltage uh, battery maybe. So, it is 12 on this side, 0 on this side. Please remember very important which side is what. Okay. And, uh, we have current flowing across it and there are two resistances here let us say uh, one is uh, 4 ohm and one is 2 ohm okay 
So we can see that the current does not have any other path to go. Okay, the same current will flow across this. Okay, whatever is the current will flow across this. Okay, so <coughs> uh, the question might be uh, find uh, voltage and current across two and four ohm resistor. Right, these are the two resistors that are connected. I'm supposed to find out what is the voltage and current that flows across this. So you see, say there will be no diversion in path. So the same current will flow through this, but the voltage will be different because there will be a drop of voltage across four, and there will be a drop of voltage across two. Okay. So the first thing first, we can just find out what is the equivalent uh, resistance. Uh, that's the best way to find out what is the current because this is a very simple circuit. So we can find out the equivalent uh, resistance here. And we know that resistance when connected in series the equivalent will add up so r would be nothing but r1 plus r2 so that is you know 4 plus 2 which is 6 ohm okay <coughs> so simple we already have been given what is my v v is 12 volt we know the current will remain the same so that means here we can simply use our ohm's law v is equal to i r so that means my current i is v divided by r so that's 12 divided by 6 which is 2 amperes so this 2 ampere will flow across the entire circuit 2 ampere 2 ampere 2 ampere 2 ampere right this is the current that will actually flow i have to find out what is the voltage drop across this so you know this voltage is getting divided across the two components v1 and v2 since they are in series if they are in parallel there is no voltage drop right so v1 and v2 <coughs> so what is my v1 it is nothing but current across it which is the same whether it's i1 or i2 the same current flows through it so it will be i r1 plus i r2 let's find out what is the voltage drop v1 is i r1 that means uh, <coughs> or is equal to i current is 2 we have just now found out resistance is 4 so it is 8 amps uh, sorry 8 volts <coughs> voltage 8 volts on the other hand if you talk about v2 this is i r2 which is nothing but 2 into 2 which is 4 volt 4 2 is the resistance right 4 so if you take 8 plus 2 we are going to get it as 12 volts that means our answers are correct so you should always check also that is also important so this was actually a very simple sum uh, you can do it okay <coughs> very preliminary very basic but let's uh, if the preliminary and the basics are clear we can definitely use it okay to solve other problems okay. let's try one more okay and this time i'm saying that uh, i'm actually going to show you a trick also here to actually do these kind of calculations faster okay but before we start maybe i can <coughs> just discuss this it may be a capacitor it may be an inductor it may be a uh, resistor okay uh, if they are connected in parallel okay parallel connection is quite obvious but sometimes we miss out these points if it's a parallel connection i that means current remains same okay across components across components that means all these components are parallelly connected the current will remain the same okay but v is different if 2 ampere and 2 ohm and 3 ohm resistances are connected then across component the voltage will also be different okay on the other hand if we are basically have sorry this is not parallel connection this is for series connection <coughs> okay just now we saw this series right so if it's a series connection this will remain the same the current series connection okay on the other hand, if you are basically considering a parallel connection, it's just the opposite. Okay, the current will be different across the components. Okay, will be different. Voltage will remain same. Voltage is same across the components. Okay, so this idea, if it's clear, we can move ahead and try to draw the circuit. What we have here is, let's say. Uh, we are basically having two, comp two components here. 
one register like this and maybe we can have one more here here So we have got these two components resistor which is connected across a voltage uh, source okay here yeah, everywhere we are going to use our own slow let's say this is again 12 volt this is the voltage that we have and the uh, resistance uh, might be let's say this is 6 ohm this is 3 ohm okay now an easy way to understand that the connection is in series or parallel you can check it for any complicated circuit as well that if the current gets divided this was i this was i and you know this current gets divided here i1 i2 so that means if different current flows across these component then they are pin parallel connection see i will be different you can see in parallel connection the i is actually different okay so the question here is also the same you have to find i and potential difference across these components okay that's important so there are two ways of doing it what you can do now is you can find out the equivalent resistance here because they are in parallel so if it's a parallel combination we can take the equivalent one one by r is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 and then take the equivalent resistance do the same calculation you will find out what is the current but we are not going to do that okay we are not going to do that in fact we are going to use a simple trick here so what will be my trick <coughs> okay the trick could be like this see uh, if we talk about current here I it gets divided in the component and it is I1 plus I2 okay this is I1 plus I2 but what is my I1? I1 is V divided by R1 and I2 is equal to V divided by R2. They are in parallel. So V is same. So if this is 12 volt across this, across this also it is 12 volt. So it is 12 volt in both the cases. So that means I can easily find out the current without simplifying the circuit. I can write it down as 12 divided by, let's say this is R1, 6 ohm so this is 2 ampere current across this and for i2 it is 12 divided by 3 which is 4 amperes so that means what is my i which is the total current it is nothing but 2 plus 4 which is 6 amps <laughs> so i was asked to find out the current across the component along the uh, 6 ampere uh, 6 ohm sorry 6 ohm it is 2 amperes and along this it is 4 amperes obviously less resistance more current will flow more resistance less current will flow that will so you can understand this okay so this is what you can do and find it out directly you can always do the simplification and then do it that is also possible but since we can do it in a simpler way why to bother right and the ask question is find the potential difference it's parallel so potential difference is 12 volt 12 volt so what are my answers here my answers are 12 volt 12 volt 2 ampere 4 ampere that's how we do it okay so based on this idea that we have just done, uh, now done let me uh, give you a relation here okay which we can actually use to solve uh, in fact uh, complicated circuits okay so maybe what i should write down the title let me write it down as a trick this is a trick here okay uh, which things uh, makes things simpler so let's say i have got the current i1 passing through this circuit which we have uh, two resistors which are connected in uh, parallel this is the previous case we are just going to write down the general form for this now okay so these are my two resistors okay so we have got a current i so that means it gets divided into i1 and i2 we've got the resistor as r1 and r2 and then finally we have got the <coughs> current as i now uh, for general statement we can write it down i is equal to i1 plus i2 
and uh, v1 is equal to uh, you know v is equal to ir so or v1 let's write down r1 i think we are talking about current here let me write it down as i1 i1 v by r1 because voltage will remain the same parallel connection and i2 is v by r2 so what we see here is that we can take a ratio okay we can take a ratio so if we take a ratio between i1 and i2 we can say it is i1 is to i2 okay is equal to i1 is v by r1 is to v by r2 so v by r1 v by r2 both v's are same so that means the ratio is 1 by r1 is to 1 by r2 so if you know the resistances and if you know what is the ratio between them we can find out what is the ratio between the current and if you're able to find out what is the ratio between the current we can actually find out what is the current flowing across this and across this using this simple trick so this ratio plays a very important role uh, if we are basically having three currents maybe there are three components here why only i have r1 and r2 it might be r3 also so i can write it down as i1 is to i2 is to i3 is equal to <coughs> 1 by r1 is to 1 by r2 is to 1 by r3 and so on okay so becomes simple the trick is very handy and in using that trick let's do one sum okay so we have this we have got a current okay we've got a current which is flowing in this circuit okay and let's say <coughs> this current that is uh, flowing through this okay is given to be 6 amperes okay and maybe this is 3 ohm this is 6 ohm okay the question says that what is the current flowing across this and this the current will get divided but what is the current flowing across this 3 ohm and what is the current flowing across this uh, 6 ohm uh, sorry yeah 6 ohm so it is i1 and the current gets divided into i1 and i2 the question is what is i1 equal to and what is i2 equal to okay so let's see what we can do here so i want to find out i1 and i2 so let's take this ratio of i1 is to i2 i1 is to i2 we can take it to be 1 by r1 my r1 is let's say 3 ohm okay <coughs> and r2 is 6 ohm 1 by 6 so we can multiply by 6 both this we know how ratio works multiply by 6 this will become 2 or you can take the lcm also and multiply the 6 it will become 1 so the ratio is 2 is to 1 i1 is to i2 the ratio is 2 is to 1 we also know that i is equal to i1 plus i2 is 6 amps given so we know the total current we know what is the ratio between i1 and i2 so we can now use a simple <coughs> your concept okay that uh, if i want to find out i1 <coughs> so what is this sum here this is 2 plus 3 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3 okay so there are three parts to it okay this current is divided into three parts out of which two part flows through r1 and one part flows through r2 this is less resistance more current will flow so i1 is 2 i2 is 1 two part will flow through i1 uh, resistance 1 and one part will flow through resistance 2 so mathematically what we can do here is we can simply write it down like this the two parts out of the total that means 3 will be the current of the total current of the total current two parts of the three part of the total current will flow across this resistor 3 ohm so this way we can simply write it down as 2 so this is 4 amps that's it and i2 one part will flow so one part okay out of the total <coughs> three parts will be the current flowing across the <coughs> second resistor cancel this 2 this is 2 ampere 
4 plus 2 6 so we know across this it would be 4 ampere across this it would be 2 amperes okay so in this way we can actually use this logic that i've just now given to you and solve a lot of problems okay a lot of numerical problems okay uh, let me just uh, uh, take one more problem uh, i can take it as an exercise here and find out the things that are being required okay so let's say i have got one more circuit here <laughs> third example we've got one resistor here let's try to make it a bit different we have got here one resistor here one resistor maybe here and one resistor here okay and this is connected across a battery of any voltage so in this case let's take it as uh, <coughs> 10 volt okay let's say in this case it is 10 volt okay let me take the values and uh, give it to you okay what are the values that are being given here okay uh, let's say this is uh, 4 ohm maybe okay this is 2 ohm okay this is 3 ohm and the last one is 6 ohm <coughs> okay these are the three resistors uh, that have been provided uh, the question is you have to find the current okay and potential difference across each component each resistor let's say okay that's the question so what we should uh, understand here is that whatever current will be generated out of this entire circuit that will be the current flowing across 4 ohm but then it will get divided here that current then again we will have it here okay so this is that idea and apart from that for voltage you know this across it should be the same voltage but the voltage will get divided between this component and this component okay so this is what is being given and you have to do your calculations So, after finding out the equivalent resistance, we get it to be 1 ohm. Uh, so, the total resistance in the circuit is 5 ohm. The battery will see that there is a 5 ohm resistance for it. So, the current is uh, V by R, which is 10 by 5, which is 2 amps. Okay. Now, once we have that, we can easily find out uh, the other part for the current across each. And I will always prefer using this trick because that keeps things simple. It's faster and get your answers easily. Ratio of the resistances so uh, you know inverse ratio so it is 1 is to 2 1 is to 3 1 is to 6 we can multiply throughout by 6 so this would be 3 is to 2 is to 1 once this is done this is almost done right 3 plus 2 5 5 plus 1 6 so 6 is more or less the total so i can easily find out what is my i1 i1 current across 2 ohm is uh, nothing but uh, <coughs> You know whatever is the total current that is flowing it's two amperes into how many part it needs third three part of the total the total is six so it is three by six so if we take this this would be one ampere right and i2 would be equal to nothing but uh, okay. this was our three i think i've taken it right three okay <coughs> so this will be three how much part is going to take it's going to take two part divided by six so it will be two by two eighteen one amps right oh no sorry this is two no so it's three so it is uh, two by three three amps and i3 only the one part of the sixth part okay into the total current two amperes so it is two by six which is one third so if we add them up we are going to get two amps two by three plus one by three is two 
add one entry is nothing but add it you get two entries so one sorry if you add this you will get one this is one m and this is one m one m plus one m is two m so that's my correct answer so these are the currents that are flowing across the resistor one now we want to find out what is the voltage so we are going to use ohm's law v is equal to ir so across uh, four ohm we know the current would be nothing but two amperes so across four ohm v is equal to ir v across four ohm is equal to i current is this into four so that's eight volts total is 10 volt out of which eight volt is flowing across four so that means uh, across the other part v across uh, three resistors two three and six we are going to get it to be 10 minus 8 which is 2 volt all of them are parallel so obviously it's the same voltage that is going to flow across all these three circuits